hello thank you for tuning into my channel it's kyla fountain we're gonna get on this healthy kick vsg life and gastric bypass what do they R -R call that r and y um please subscribe to this channel i'm new to the youtube we trying to build subscribe share the video like all that good stuff i'm gonna have to download the little questionnaire Thing. Leave a comment. Leave a comment to Kyla Fountain, and this is is Jill there. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Tiffany. Um, yeah, leave a comment. Ask questions. Things you want to know in regards to the surgery, um, the ups, the downs, the ins and the outs. I'm gonna ask stuff. her a few questions. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I'm gonna ask you a few questions. Okay. Yeah, because I like to ask people questions. That's me. That's what I like to do. So. Please let me know if you can hear this audio. I'm working on the audio as well. Um, so, Tiffany, um, what was your highest weight? Um, my highest weight was 223 pounds. And you stand four foot uh, and don't. I'm five foot even. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I'm five foot even. Five foot even. And um, tell me what were some of the challenges you had um, once you had the surgery. Oh, let's first start with your pre-op, um, you know, the pre-op, the, the liquid phase. It was horrible. I hated it every day of my life, just being honest, um, because I had to do liquid. The ISO Pure, um, it was like 40 grams of uh, protein in one bottle. The most disgusting stuff in life. Um, and I had to do it for two weeks, but within that two weeks, I was losing too much weight. So when I went back to my checkup, they took me off of it. Yeah, um, yeah my stomach was growling. I had an attitude, <laughs> something wicked. Like, I was just angry, you know. You know, you want to eat and you can't, and then you, they want you to drink this protein stuff that has absolutely no flavor. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mm -mm. So did you have any setbacks during the uh that pre preoperative phase? Like uh did you mess up? Did you sneak a little chips or anything? No, I didn't. I did the actual diet because I wanted the surgery and yeah. I needed to have it because I was tired of sticking myself with insulin and also tired of taking the metformin pills and right. also pricking my fingers. So anything that's gonna help me to be a better me, I was doing it. I complained a lot, yes, but I mean I will do it again. All right. So what are some of the things you face now that, um, because you've had the surgery, what are some of the things that you face now since surgery um, that you didn't know prior to surgery? That you're going to be still hungry. So when I say that, I mean like um, my mentality hasn't changed. The size of my stomach has changed, but when I go out to eat, I still order as if I have this bigger stomach. So I can maybe get a bite and a half in, and then um, that's about it before, you know, I'm just sitting there looking like, okay, we're full. And everybody else is just, and I'm just like, you know, about 30 more minutes if I get another bite, you know. <laughs> so um, that would say that's one of the biggest parts that's changed. It's been, still been hungry afterwards. And maybe even just having the same meal and just eating that same meal throughout the day until you get tired of them throw it away. Like, it's, I'm just tired of eating this. Right. Well, so how much weight have you lost in Ooh. total? So, let's say 223 pounds and currently weighing about 132. So, that would put me about what? Mmm. But you were smaller than that too. I think your well, lowest, the lowest weight I got down to was one twenty nine. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, but I like teeter between one twenty eight, one thirty five. Then when it's time for the menstrual, I'm at like one forty. And then it goes back and then down. Then it goes back down. So. Yeah. Oh, so, <clears throat> so with the scale, yeah, that's what I wanted to ask you. Excuse me. I don't know if y'all heard me, but with the gastric and the uh, vertical sleeve gastrectomy. You get a lot of burps. I know I stated that on my other video. That I get a lot of air and burps. So 
No, I don't. I, I'm. I got this, girl. So, um, you probably hear a little crickles in the cricklies in the in the background. We in the wilderness. No, we went walking. It's pretty nice out today. Um. So yeah, with with losing the weight, so it fluctuates. So is it healthy getting on the scale a lot? You, how did you feel about getting on the scale? Cause me, I really have an issue with the scale. Like I want to get on it all the time, but I know the doctors they prefer you not to. Like don't weigh yourself like that, you know. But for some reason, you know, I feel like if I don't weigh myself, I might feel you know eat too much or. I don't know. You know, you your mind be all over the place with this surgery and your new your new stomach. And so you don't want to mess stuff up. You don't want to stretch your pouch and all that stuff they be saying. So how how do you go about managing that? It's a lot. Um, so with the scale part of it, in the beginning, yes, I was on the scale a whole lot because I wanted to see the results. So everybody would say, hey, you're losing weight. But I, I didn't see it for a long time, you know. Um, and as far as the scale, the scale can be very discouraging, yes, because you're thinking, I feel light, but the scale ain't showing that I've lost anything, you know. But then we know we lose inches before we lose pounds anyway. Um, I can say the scale can be disappointing at times. Even putting on clothes that you couldn't fit, and they're bigger, I mean smaller rather, and you're like, well, why do the scale still say this? Because you're still losing inches. Um, the other part of the question, you asked me so much. Yeah, it was about the fluctuation, and then, um, you know, eating i know you stayed at the eating like how do you go about you know i know you said you eat the small increments but you know you don't want to stretch your pouch so how do you go about not doing that i know they say don't overstuff yourself because that can stretch your pouch and eating too many carbohydrates and sugar but then i see other people that had the surgery and they had the surgery years ago, and they still slim, and they saying they enjoy whatever they want. So I'm like, does it differ with different people? Or I would say yes, um, but even in the eating part of it, um, I can eat, but then also I have a give, which is what I call a stop. My stomach is going to let me know, okay, that that's enough. Like, you, you're about to regurgitate everything that you're eating. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes it be like that, because I remember one day I was just, overly thirsty and I just wanted some water like I just wanted to drink some ice cold water and I took a big old gulp and before I knew it, it came back up at my nose I was throwing up water you see what I'm saying it's just water so you have to do everything in increments you have to take your time you cannot just because you want to drink something just you know what I'm saying overindulge and everything is with timing and not so much timing but just ease you just can't just jump in there um and then with the weight fluctuation I did that for like the first six months to a year uh, one minute my weight be up, next minute it be down. I seen I have a friend. She's ten years, twelve years out, maybe about fifteen years out now, and she's still small. And I got another friend that lost a hundred pounds with the VSG, but she gained fifty of it back. So I would say it all depends on you and what you eat: carbs, uh, breads, pastas, candy, sweets, all that. You absorb all the anything you eat, consume. You absorb it fast, so you'll put on weight quicker because your stomach is processing faster than it would with your normal stomach. You drink liquor. Or you smoke weed, edibles, all that, you're going to get higher quicker because of your stomach processing so fast. So, Right. Yep. Well, stand up and let us see. No. Stand up and let us yeah, see. Yeah, my stomach is ugly. No, it ain't. It is horrible. So I'm going to hold this pouch right here. <laughs> but you went from 223, you said? Yes, down to 130 pounds. But, yeah, just look. So... She looks good, y'all. She looks good. I can't give her that. So, she looks good. So, that was my inspiration in getting my surgery because we grew up together. We was chunky together. And when she lost all her weight, I was like, oh, she left me hanging. <laughs> she said, I ain't about to be big no more. Well, yeah, look, it took a lot for I me. I wouldn't mind getting a tummy tug. I'm going to be honest. A lot of loose skin. It ain't bad, but it ain't good. I put it that way. Well, it ain't bad, but you know, you and for you yourself, you wanted to uh, get whatever you took it off or whatever. Yeah. Even though you look great to me, I don't think I'm it's bad. But I wear a cute dress. I'm tired of this midsection, like it's talking <laughs> for me. I just. But that's why I said it must just depend because sometimes it's flat, and then you know, like you said, when it's your cycle time, then and then, then also, it, but, 
I you know, that's I natural probably. Fibroids. I got two fibroids, one small, one medium, and I promise you, they just don't like me. One day I can be perfectly just petite, and the next day them fibroids and you know, but to God yeah. be the glory. And I know a lot of people get um, the surgery because of PCOS. Now, I didn't get the surgery because of PCOS. I got the surgery because of... She wants to turn it around on me. <laughs> okay, so back to you guys. Um, I got the surgery because I was dealing with a lot of health issues. Of course, hypertension. I, I uh, stated that in my other video. I also was... a uh, My A1C numbers was going up so i was approaching di being a diabetic pre-diabetic pre-diabetic yeah and um i just didn't want that for my life you know i was too i'm too young in my opinion to be dealing with a whole lot of health issues and dealing with a, you know i had enough i had enough with all the pills and things like that so i said well let me go ahead and and do the right thing and and um get the surgery was i nervous about the surgery absolutely you know because I didn't know how it was going to happen for me. Because I've heard, of course, all the horror stories about the surgery. That's the first thing you listen to is the horror story. You see the good benefits behind it. But when people tell you, yeah, they threw up for months and months. And they lost so much weight and bone density. Right. And, right by the diet. Yeah. And, 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 and the doctors also stated that as well. They're not doing right by the doctors what the doctor has requested for you to do. And so they get upset when things don't turn out the way that they want them to. Mm -hmm. But you really gotta follow directions. I'm telling you. Um, and they get better as you listen yeah, to follow directions. I mean, things that flow along, like that man ate that chicken after surgery and died. Yeah, You know. now that was horrible. Yeah. And so um, you want to be able to maintain, get, you don't wanna go through a surgery. Look, look, just listen to that. A surgery to help correct your weight, get you healthy. And then you go back and do what you wanted to do and do what you was doing after, be, I mean, before the surgery. I mean, that defeats the purpose. That defeats the point. You want to get healthy. You want to live your life healthier. You want to you want to fit in those nice clothes. and You want to be able to run like we trying to run a day, honey. <laughs> I wish I could have recorded that part. I just knew I could run. Not yet, but I'm getting there. Yeah, I mean, that joke was sprinting. I said, what the heck? <laughs> then now I'm talking about the one piece right here on the side of the leg. <laughs> yeah. I said, I hope I ain't tore my ACL. Ain't that what the basketball... ACL's in your ankle. Uh, no, ACL. I thought it was in your knee. ACO? Yeah, ACL. I don't know what that is. A ACL's in your ankle. Well, it's the an ankle, and then they got an ACL. Y'all yeah. know what I'm talking about. The basketball players always mess it up. The ACL and the ankle. It's the ankle? Okay. <laughs> what that thing? I, I don't know. So but since I, you are a new surgery, ha, newly had your surgery rather, yes. um, what scared you about going into the surgery? Um, like I said, thinking I was my part, like I probably wasn't going to have the good benefit of it. I was going to get the con instead of the pro. <laughs> so I thought I was going to come out the surgery sick as a dog, throwing up all over the place, throwing up for months and. Cause I got a cousin, honey. She she said she could not eat a thing. She could not drink a thing. She lost weight so fast, and it was just really hard for her. And she still was struggling to eat. And I, but I didn't have any of that. I threw up after after I had the surgery. I said, and um, you know, while I was in my hospital stay, but they, you know, of course, they ain't gonna let you go home until you're able to drink something or drink. So I was able to drink a little bit, so they, you know, was able to send me home. But once I got home, I think it got better because I had my popsicles, I had my sugar-free pudding, I had my sugar-free jello, you know, everything that they told me. So that helped me out a whole lot, a whole, whole lot. And then, you know, when I finally, after my two weeks, I was finally able to eat that egg. Y'all know about that egg. Man, that was the best day of my life. <laughs> I was able to have that egg, and I enjoyed it. But after that day, I didn't want that egg again. I See, wanted I didn't some get no chicken. Egg. What did you get to have? Jello. Jello for two weeks. Jello, cottage cheese. Oh yeah. I okay. didn't eat that though. I don't eat cottage cheese. Ice popsicles. Yeah, I had and, the popsicles. And uh, protein drink. That was it. I I, could, I couldn't have the protein drink yet. Oh, and I think uh, an unsweetened applesauce. Oh okay. Yep. She turned the camera all kind of ways. Hold it up straight like I did for you. And yeah. uh. <laughs> But yeah, um, so this is our journey. Um, Tiffany, 
uh, has had her surgery for how long now? Five. Five years. I'm just, how long? Two months in. Yesterday made two months. Yesterday made two months in. And so I just look forward uh, to working out because I'm going back to the gym. I'm going back walking. I know it's getting ready to be fall. I'm going to have to get to the gym because I can't, I can't be in the cold walking and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, so I just look forward to our journey. Uh, any questions? Any other questions, Tiff? No, nope, we'll see you in part two. We'll see you in part two. Thank you. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. Also, Tiffany. Follow Run Girl Run KC, YouTube and Facebook and Instagram. See you guys later.